So just yesterday, leaks about the future of Assassin's Creed were released. And if you're someone who's a regular viewer of my channel, you know I always talk about leaks like these. These recent leaks involve several future Assassin's Creed projects, mainly focusing on Assassin's Creed Infinity. You know, that mysterious platform we barely knew about for a while. There's also some information about Codename Red, and even a pretty major leak about Assassin's Creed Hex. I'll be discussing all of these in this video. Now I don't want to make this a 20 plus minute video as there is not 20 plus minutes worth of leaks to talk about and I don't want to waste your time. Now just real quick if you're new to my channel why not consider subscribing I talk about all things Assassin's Creed related. So without further ado let's get right into it. So first off these new leaks came from Insider Gaming but more specifically Tom Henderson who I've covered a few times on this channel. He's a pretty trustworthy source of any news, updates or leaks when it comes to games in general so I wouldn't really think twice if these leaks are reliable. So Assassin's Creed Infinity, ever since it got announced back in 2021, we've heard nothing of it, not even a drop of information. All we did know is that it's a hub for many Assassin's Creed games including Red, Hex and Invictus, and it features free and paid content, along with multiplayer features and just very brief information. But just yesterday we got an exclusive set of information regarding it. So first off, Tom Henderson stated that they've been provided demo footage of Assassin's Creed Infinity that they're not able to show to the public, which fair enough is pretty reasonable, but he states that in the demo footage, we're able to see the user go from the Infinity Hub to Assassin's Creed Red in just a few seconds and it continues right where they left off without the need to start each game separately after returning to the main platform. Now this might sound a bit odd, but instantly my mind jumps to Roblox. You see in Roblox, it's not an actual game, but more so the hub for where every game on Roblox is stored. So for example, let's say I wanted to play Look Smaxing Simulator. I basically just hit play and then pretty much Roblox will switch me to that game. That's essentially how I feel Assassin's Creed Infinity will work. But of course this will be on a much larger technical scale. So instead of switching between smaller scale games, we're pretty much changing mainline Assassin's Creed games entirely. So I do wonder how efficient or fast that will be. I mean the information Tom Henderson gave stated that it was within a few seconds, but I don't know if I believe that. I mean seeing as Insider Gaming received demo footage of Infinity, this gives me Ubisoft shill vibes written all over it. But hey that's just my opinion. This next piece of insider gaming information talks about how the primary goal of Infinity is to provide a live service experience, all of which is integrated into the modern day storyline, which of course is information we already know so there's not really anything new there. But on the rare chance that you don't know what live service means, it essentially refers to the development and monetization model where a game is continuously updated and supported with new content over an extended period. It's pretty common now in video games, and this approach often includes regular additions such as new DLCs, characters, events and often at times cosmetic items or microtransactions, which uh, is right up Ubisoft's alley. The goal of this is pretty much to get us, the consumer, to stay playing the game over a long period of time. A perfect example I can give to you is a game that came out quite recently, which is Rocksteady's Suicide Squad Killer Justice League. This is the embodiment of a live service game as it's a game that the developers intend to keep updated with new content over the course of however long. But I'll be honest, this game is straight ass. This part did mention that the modern day storyline will be integrated into Assassin's Creed Infinity and I'm not gonna lie, that breaks my heart because I feel like I'm in the minority here but I really love the modern day side of Assassin's Creed and I'm not just referring to the Desmond era but in general, even in Valhalla, I enjoyed exploring the house and its surroundings and just interacting with little bits of information. It kind of gave me that breath of fresh air from fucking up enemies as an assassin or rather a viking. So to see now that the modern day will just be pushed aside into Infinity, I can only see this as being a big drawback. Now I don't know how many of you know this but there was a leaked modern day cutscene at the end of Mirage that was removed from the final game and it was focused on the modern day way into the future so maybe we'll see Infinity's modern day side be set in a distant future, who knows. But then that also raises the question as to what will happen with Sean, Rebecca, William and so on but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The article also states that Infinity will be released alongside Assassin's Creed Red, which I'm pretty sure nobody expected. Well, at least I did not expect it, because I thought Infinity would be released in like late 2026 near the release of Assassin's Creed Hex. So I guess that's interesting. I assume we'll be downloading both Red and Infinity as one, and then once we launch the game, we'd be thrown into the hub. It's definitely going to be a different experience, and I don't know how long it will take me to get used to it, or if I ever will. The exchange will be the item shop, offering players the opportunity to purchase daily and weekly in-game cosmetics for Red's two protagonists, Naoi and Yasuke. Okay, you know if I said what I just read to somebody that has not played Assassin's Creed in like 10 years, they'd be thinking I was talking gibberish. The idea of an item shop, daily and weekly in-game cosmetics and outfits just sounds outrageous to be honest. But just going back to this information, I do assume it'll be similar to how an item shop works in Fortnite or any of those games. How do you guys feel about this because I'm very skeptical about it, I just cannot imagine seeing a literal 
actual item shop in Assassin's Creed. This also raises the question as to how we'd get the currency to purchase these items, or how much these daily and weekly cosmetics would cost. So that's the main reason why I'm so skeptical of this. Now since there are no official images of this item shop, the pictures you're seeing on screen are AI generated so please do remember that and they come from the French YouTuber Jonathan. These images are just there to give you an idea of what an item shop might look like. I'm not saying this is what it will look like but just what it could potentially turn out to be. In addition to the exchange, Infinity also has a synchronization feature that allows the player to access projects for each protagonist. To explain them in their simplest form, projects are mini battle passes with a narrative behind them offering players the ability to earn cosmetic rewards. Projects will be added to our Infinity constantly, focusing mainly on DLC and new game releases, or even as a means of sustaining player interest during a lack of any new content. Okay, first off, that's a lot to digest. Now this is a bombshell. The idea of a battle pass in a franchise that's solely focused on single player games is certainly strange. But then again, I guess Assassin's Creed Invictus, which is the mysterious multiplayer Assassin's Creed game, will play a massive role in this. I feel like if Invictus was a thing that did not exist, I honestly cannot see how a battle pass would work well for games like Red and Hex. It is looking pretty likely that in this Invictus multiplayer game, the more we play and level up, the more we earn currency, which will then be used in this battle pass that Infinity has going on. This will also mean purchasing cosmetics, outfits and so on for games like Red and Hex. It's pretty confusing but I think I understand the route that's going to be taken here. So yeah, that's how I see this whole battle pass idea being implemented. The focus here is Invictus. Now the one concern I have with this is the way in which we earn currency. I feel like Ubisoft are really copying Fortnite star with this. Because for one, let's be honest, Fortnite made battle passes popular. And for two, the way we get V-Bucks in Fortnite is through challenges, objectives, and just leveling up the battle pass in general. And I can see this approach being done the same way for Infinity. This would also mean that I can see Ubisoft adding a premium addition to the battle pass, meaning we'd pay more for more things to unlock in a higher tier, which honestly seems like a standard Ubisoft approach at this point. So yeah, pretty much the multiplayer game Invictus is Ubisoft's Fortnite. Let me know your thoughts down below on a battle pass being incorporated into Assassin's Creed. It's understood that the current strategy for Ubisoft with Infinity is to release a mainline game every two years, with smaller experiences in between. Now this is fair enough, it's better than releasing a game every year, so I guess quality over quantity, but then again every two years is still pretty fast. Red is scheduled for later this year, with Invictus, a multiplayer offering, being planned for 2025, and Hex for 2026. The latter title, penned as being the darkest Assassin's Creed game ever, will have a lead female protagonist, currently named Elsa for the first time since Assassin's Creed Chronicles China in 2015. Now I want to go over the fact that this leak says the darkest Assassin's Creed game ever. My question is what are we basing that off? What criteria does a dark game fall under? My guess is the fact that Hex will explore more of a morally complex theme compared to other Assassin's Creed games. This could include delving into the psychology side of assassins, or maybe a darker side of humanity and history. We do know that this game is set around a darker period, which is of course the witch trials. So I guess that quote unquote darkest Assassin's Creed game ever does kind of fit under that section. I personally feel like Hex would be a game that's filled with a lot of turmoil, witch hunts and even occults. This of course aligns perfectly with the name Hex, hinting exactly at witches or witchcraft. Now just going back to the information, it also says that Hex will have a lead female protagonist currently named Elsa for the first time since Assassin's Creed Chronicles China in 2015. Now before anybody comments saying, but what about Evie, Cassandra or Eivor, you have to remember that this leak depicts a solo female protagonist and Xiao Jun is pretty much the last time we've seen a solo female protagonist. And honestly I'm quite excited to see another one. Now the name given to this Hex protagonist is Elsa, and no not the Elsa you're thinking of. Now do bear in mind that names can change before a game is released, so I would not take this name as 100% confirmation. We've seen Eivor in Valhalla previously be named Jorah, which then got changed to Eivor when the game was released. But as to the name Elsa in Assassin's Creed Hex, what does this name even mean and why was it chosen? Now for one, the name Elsa might be chosen for its cultural or historical relevance to the game's setting. You see if Hex, meaning witch in German, is set in a region where witch trials were prominent, such as parts of Europe, the name Elsa could reflect a common or culturally significant name of that era or location. Other projects include Obsidian, which is the Black Flag remake, Nebula, which refers to settings based in India, Aztec Empire and Mediterranean, Raid, which is a free-to-play four-player co-op that's PvE, Echo another multiplayer title, and another Assassin's Creed remake which are all scheduled to release by the end of the decade. Now as to the information of these games, there is not much at all which is to be expected. However, when we do get more information regarding these upcoming games, I'll be sure to cover them extensively. Now I'm looking forward to this Black Flag remake. Do we need it? Absolutely not. But I'm not going to complain as that game is iconic. I just hope they don't screw it up or change it up a lot, since after all it is a remake. But I do feel like they should have focused more on Assassin's Creed 1 as a remake instead. Is that just me? 
So there you have it. Those are the leaks and information that was released yesterday as of me making this video. I don't know when this video will come out, but hopefully you did enjoy this. Now, I tried my best to not make this video over 20 minutes long, as there's not 20 minutes worth of information and leaks here to talk about, and I don't want to waste any more of your time. If you did enjoy this video and want to stay up to date on everything Assassin's Creed, as well as rankings and lore side of this franchise, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.